Good afternoon. Um, can everybody hear me like this? That's good. Okay. Um, I tend to walk around, so just tell me to stay put. Um, I hope I realize myself. So welcome. Um, did you have a good time so far at DrupalCon? Yeah. Good. Good to hear. Um, so this is actually my first DrupalCon, <laughs> and I'm already on stage, so I'm a bit nervous. I hope you um, can uh, forgive that. So I'm here to talk about making Drupal as easy as Squarespace. It's a very catchy title, I hope, um, regarding the audience attendance. Uh, we got that. Um, what you see here is uh, me, myself, and my two co-founders of the company that I work for. Um, we try to keep the hair level about normal between the two, of, the three of us. So yeah. So uh, about myself, um, there we go. First problem. <laughs> there we go. So by myself, uh, I'm Philip von Bergen. I live in Switzerland. Uh, I've been developing for 15 years or so. Um, you can catch me on Drupal.org and also on Twitter mostly. And um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I'm the CTO and owner of an agency in Switzerland. We're about 25 people-ish. Uh, we have five developers, including me. And uh, we develop websites, web applications for small to medium, or even national, but you know, Switzerland still small, uh, companies. There we go. Um, Switzerland, that's where I'm from. As you can see, uh, all the cliches, cow, Alps, <laughs> watches as so well. Um, but also a lot of small companies. Um, we mostly serve companies in the range of two to 100 people. We have some national companies, but even as I said, they're small as well. So we were facing a challenge. We decided five years ago to switch from a closed source system to an open source system, Drupal. And the problem that we face is that our clients couldn't deal with Drupal the way it was. Um, the form base approach, we had an existing custom client, uh, existing client base that was used to drag and drop um, editing of web pages. So we wanted to please them and we also wanted to do something new to Drupal and we decided to build a new module. Um, it's called Page Designer. That's what I'm going to present here today and um, also talk about all the details behind it. Um, one, more, one more thing that we had in our um, preconditions was we wanted to have a low-code approach to maintaining existing websites or small websites, so that we, we wanted to that, build that in as well. Now I'm in the Netherlands, which is nice and flat, by the way. <laughs> so that feels also like a stopover, because I, we were in the Alps, like we had all these mountains to overcome. Um, I managed to go to DrupalCon, I even got talk, and we have a stable-ish module ready, and it's open source on Drupal.org as well, and we made also the journey from a closed source company to an open source company, which was, you know, had its own challenges. Um, so what we built, um, what we built, I will show you in a minute, uh, in a second actually, uh, we built the front end, basically for the user to edit its content to publish pages to basically work without the complexity of Drupal and also without the uh, admin UI, actually. Um, what that looks like, you can see. Uh, I want just to say some more things. Um, the goal was to actually provide a consistent user interface and also to enable the user just to um, see what he's doing. So um, let's start, because there was enough telling. Um, what I'm going to show you is a video that I made because uh, 20 minutes is very short. So I'm going to show you the video, how it's edited, how the editing works. Um, I did that on this laptop last night, <laughs> actually. So if there's any checkering mouse movement, that's because of the mouse pad. Um, and also I will tell you about what's actually behind the whole technology. So it's going to be like double input feature right now. Um, yeah, so I'll just start and I'll try to keep the microphone because my notes are over there. So let's see. Does it move? Yeah. Okay, as you can see, we are still in Drupal at the moment. I just activated edit mode. So you can see the interface changed. 
And what you're going to see is like I'm building a website just with some text and I'm talking about content editing. So the approach of this module or this idea is to have one page, create a page, design a page. Um, what we're using as a base for the interface is Grapes.js. Somebody has heard of Grapes.js editor? Okay. Um, this is an open source uh, module to create HTML templates, actually, and we repurposed it to create Drupal websites or Drupal pages. Let's put it that way. Um, the elements that you see on the right, the rows and stuff that you see there, um, is based on UI patterns. That's a module also, a cron trip module, which uh, allows to create HTML and YML based patterns to include them. And we also integrated a media library, as you just saw. So the images that you upload and use here are part of the media library on the core. So we directly um, uh, connect to the media library that you use in the back end and also in the front end. Um, it's getting faster than I thought. <laughs> uh, one more thing that distinguishes this uh, to other page editors is that all the data that we save, so like from the row to the component to the individual field or entities in Drupal, so we don't save blob of HTML, we save the actual entities as a tree. So we have a tree, the page level is the root, and we have a tree the whole way down. So each row that we, um, uh, sorry, each row that we that we uh, put in in there is actually part of the tree. Also, the data that we insert. Um, the approach that we use for the different types that we support is a plugin-based approach. So we have a plugin manager integrated into Drupal or into the module that uses the same um, plugin system that Drupal uses, and we try to uh, make the module extendable. Um, yeah, right now you see we also integrate, okay, no, that's just some more fun part. What you've seen with the YouTube video, we also use the embed module to embed videos as well into, into the media library, so we use the media core again. Um, this is just uh, some, some uh, fancy tweaks that we did. We can copy elements, which creates copies of the data. Not everybody's happy to hear that, but that's the approach that we, knew, that we used. <laughs> because uh, our clients thought that way, that if they change the data at one end, it doesn't change on the other. So we can copy stuff as well. Uh. Um, by the way, I forgot something about the patterns. The patterns are part of the theme, so they're not part of the module. So we decoupled that. So the theme provides modules that the, uh, the patterns that the module uses and displays here. And we also try to keep the separation of design and module separate. We also integrate with the Drupal block layout and the form. So we insert uh, blocks directly into the page which is very handy, especially when we create headers or footers for, uh, for a website, because we can reuse the menu blocks that we already have in Drupal. So we basically create a menu block, insert it at the right place. Um, what we also included is what you can see here. We also included some styling properties. Those are defined on the pattern itself again, um, but are limited, of course, to what the module actually can handle. We have a way to introduce new CSS properties, but um, we're still working on that. <coughs> so, um, the idea here, as you can see, is for instance, like in the marketing or in the landing page department, to create like visual um, anchors here. So we included that, which is all about, it's all based on the idea that the, that an editor doesn't know about. Um, code or HTML, but only about design. Um, here we see the web form integration. Yeah. And one thing that follows up next, which is kind of a tricky thing for us in, in the next few months, is that we have our own layout system. <laughs> so the layout builder is a 
bit too late for us, but we uh, we try to introduce that as well. Just gonna keep the video rolling. It's almost done. Um, we have some other uh, features included, like the like the like the the tablet and smartphone view, which we all, which we'll gonna see in a minute, and also like the idea that we want to support responsive content, so we can change the content depending on what device is accessing the page. So I'm just changing the background image here. So, yeah, took me less time to explain than I thought. Um, so maybe some more background about the module itself. So the module itself started off as a first version that is somewhere under the carpet because I designed the interface and I'm a developer. So this version is actually version 2. We worked on that uh, three people for a year now about on this version and uh, we started directly on Drupal.org so every commit, every mistake is public. Um, but that was a decision that we took because we realized if we don't open source from the beginning, we don't open source. That's the thing. So as you can see, so there's a preview function as well. Um, there's still stuff to integrate. I'm coming back to that as well. Uh, what you can see now is another module. This is the page three that we used. That is also for our clients very important to see how is the structure of the menu tree directly in the system and navigate we're using that. And you also saw I can publish a page directly using that and display it publicly. So there's a simple workflow, publishing workflow integrated. It's not integrated with workflow with content moderation yet. So that was a quick video just to show how it works. Um, so to repeat, to repeat a bit, but also to summarize. Uh, the current state is we got the page designer, which is base module, which has a lot of uh, functionality built in. Uh, we got some sub-modules which are shipped with Page Designer. Um, we have the plugin system, we have the media and block integration, we have the web form integration and we have this page tree. And we, because it's our thing and nobody noticed us on Drupal.org, we have about 50 plus installations. So for them, mostly from us, I see some downloads on Drupal.org but I'm not sure whether they're actually using it. So um, yeah, that's the state. What's next? Um, one of the biggest things that we want to implement, and we have a client for that, that's good, uh, is revisions. Because the system is not yet in revision, revisionable in the sense of Drupal, so you can't go back to the revision before you edited something. Uh, we do use uh, revisions, of course, for the cost amenities, but it's not integrated into Drupal that you can actually switch between revisions of a page, because that's what the user thinking of, is of using is thinking of a page. Um, also, what we want to provide is a distribution, so to make installation easier. Um, that's certainly one of the things uh, that would give us more traction. Layout Builder is, of course, a big topic because both on the side that we want to have the page designer integrated in the layout builder, but also using the layout builder for our own layouts. Um, the page designer, by the way, is, uh, is basically a field that you can insert in a content type, and it just opens up basically the editor. It, it inserts the, the button to add open edit mode, and then you can just insert into that field visually. Um, one thing that also gives us more traction is documentation. It's always coming last. That's the normal thing for developers. And we also want to open up the API. There's a lot more, lot more stuff that we want to do or could do. Um, but one thing <laughs> that I'm asking of you, of course, um, is getting involved. Because, um, we, as I said, we are free developers. We've worked on that for some time. And even if it's just, you know, just, even if it's feedback or ideas or installations and just testing the module, seeing how it behaves in different environments, because um, we have our environment and we use it in another environment, but it's not like tested in a lot of environments. That's one thing that we can use a lot of feedback on. Uh, also, more use cases. I mean, we have our use case. We see it happening both mostly for small and medium-sized businesses. We have some national businesses as well as clients who use it as well. Um, but more, more, uh, more feedback there would be good. And of course, if you really are into it, 
you can also contribute and pa patch things and also tell us you know where we go wrong we built the module while we were learning Drupal so basically I looked the plugin system up for this module so I'm probably gonna have some hacks in there as well so that would be also helpful and also just maybe have the, the thing that I mostly am interested in is the, the long-term idea on Drupal like Drupal is fighting against smaller uh, different CMS's like WordPress there's a composer um, there's Squarespace there's Wix and both with the Gutenberg and the D8X and also our module I would like to combat this problem that we have as a community that people want visual editing and we can't provide it that easily and this is one of one part of the solution maybe or not I'll see but I'm pretty sure that uh, especially the HTML one HTML blob as a safe to save the data is not the right approach because that's not using Drupal like it's supposed to be and that's one of the major things that we've decided we want to build our own module using cost amenities yeah so before we I tried to make it short and I'm try I achieved that very good um, one more two more things because um, they told me to do 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 so but I also uh, do gladly uh, don't forget the contribution day and first day so these are the times and the topics also what do you think of Drupal.com end of my session and I actually want to get some questions discussion going um, you can head over to these two projects or also to the website to get the slides um, or catch me on Drupal.org or Twitter and yeah that's I try to keep it short so we have time to actually interact so thank you very much Any question? Any questions? Yeah. Does it work with uh, translation? It does work with translation in the sense that you basically have to translate the field. So the field is just empty on the translated page, and then you have to translate the page. We have some functionality in there that you can copy the content from one language to another language, or also between sides, uh, between nodes. Sorry, I'm always talking about pages because. Uh, but you can copy data between nodes and also between languages. So that's already in there. Yeah. Sure. Um, can you set permissions on certain functionality? Um, we have some permissions in there, so you can decide whether it should work, well, whether, whether users should be able to actually use the page design at all. And also, on, we have a distinguished, uh, we can distinct, distinguish between pa uh, certain patterns. But that's in the YAML level. That's not on, not yet on configurable level, but on the YAML level. Yeah. I'm also li I'm also interested in hearing questions or ideas about the whole idea. Basically, <laughs> do we do do we need that? What do you think? Thanks. I think it's great what you're doing. Um, and it reminds me of. Uh, X8 by cohesion, which is recently acquired by Andrea. Um, I don't know if you know about it or not, but uh, my question is how does this compare to what they are offering? Um, I guess um, they're, f they're further, way, uh, further ahead with the user interface and the functionality. Um, the main difference is for me, that's, that's the thing, is like the cost amenities. So you can basically go down to, to the individual alt text of an image and export that in a structured format. Which is for me one of the things that we wanted to have from the, f from the get go. Because um, a big blob of HTML, uh, I've imported many, many web pages like that and I can't. You, you can't use it afterwards. So that's one of the parts also like with the API so that we can actually use this to um, power web apps or apps like getting the data that we already have, displaying it different ways. So that's one of the things I can think of. Yeah.
Thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll hope we'll get traction. <laughs> Any other comments? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah, first of all, I want to say it's really great. Thanks. Also, uh, um, we are um, currently looking uh, at our company to use, we, we can't really decide on Layout Builder, Gutenberg, or Paragraphs. So mm -hmm. I think it's really relevant, this, uh, okay. this project. Cool. Um, and I wanted to, you, you mentioned Grape. JS? Grapes JS. Grapes yeah. JS? Yeah. That, that's what you're using um, behind the scenes. Yeah, we used Grapes JS is basically an HTML editor which looks and works similar way but produces raw HTML on CSS and we hijack basically this module to produce to, to insert our own hooks to actually generate uh, entities on Drupal. Yeah. Uh, we extended it a bit, we haven't yet um, the time or the <laughs> <laughs> the resources to actually get in contact with Grapes to, to see how we can collaborate more. And the, the, uh, the idea of Grapes is actually to produce HTML. So we don't know whether we can have uh, a common goal there. We'll see. Yeah. I think, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>